And here he goes to dump his cancer stick. <laughs> Well, unless you smoked it for him. <laughs> oh, she always does that. She doesn't need a cigarette for that. <laughs> what the f*** is this? Oh, that's what you could have been saving if you had Geico. Geico? Who wants Geico? This looks f ridiculous. It's the money you could be saving with Geico. Even after this commercial ends, he'll be here waiting. He just wants you to save money. Tell me who's watching. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. <laughs> just from being crazy on the camera? Just from being crazy on the camera. And that's kind of clicking for me right now. Like That's why people actually want to view things. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's so ridiculous, right? It is. It is. We've got to do the crazy. It's all right to be just a little bit crazy. Being creative is being a little bit crazy in just the right vibration. With that in mind, you should understand God's completely insane. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. I hear you have a, quite a few interesting concepts that I would like you to tell me about. Well, where do we begin? This is the dilemma that I face within the American public education system. It begins with a question. What is this? We are so focused on a goal, whether it be passing a test or graduating as first in the class. We all ask that question. However, in this way, we do not really learn at our fullest. I did. You did. That's why you're here. We do whatever it takes to achieve our original objective. And if we embrace this, I feel as if we can make a serious change and a positive change. And it was kind of a, a critical, mature, critical salt in our traditional educational system. But if we just want to ignore and push this to the side. Shock your school and superintendent and principal and other powers that be that uh, want to be congratulated all the time. And this was a uh, message from the heart of Wayne Jennings uh, sent me an email. And, you know, look at the speech and, and I said, Chief, we got to find this person. we got to bring them back. And I tried to contact the school, and I didn't get a hold. I got a hold of one of the counselors who told me that they were under orders not to forward any information to her. I'm not kidding. Then I expect to see the same problems again and again. Or the Russian Revolution, or the French Revolution, or the American Revolution. And revolution, the word itself, really just means to revolve. So I took a chance, I heard of an unschooling conference in Massachusetts, Eastern Massachusetts. Yeah, I think it was Eastern Massachusetts, and I just took a chance and contacted this person. I gave her my email address, and if you know Erica, just tell her that folks in Minnesota are looking forward to hearing her. And for those of you who, who came to MAP a few years ago, and when we had 16-year-old uh, Kim Marciniak from San Antonio, Texas, refused to take the task test, the tax test, 
text assessment of skills and knowledge. And um, I think we had in Rochester at the time. And by the time we got her, she was 16, but age 15. She practiced very mature and intelligent form of civil disobedience. I'm impressed with young people when I meet them and they're way smarter than me. And my arrogance level is just, I mean, I, that's cool. And, and so anyhow, Eric. Morning, everybody. To spiral. It says, come here. Here is my allure. Come into my lair. Come check me out. I have all these really pretty words. To teach to talk about, to analyze empathy and compassion, not only in the United States, but in the world, and why we have such a lack of it, or where is it, what is it, and how do we get it back in our society today? Conspiracy, depopulation, worry, suffering, chaos, these are all allure words. We want our independence, and we want to be able to do what we want. We want to be able to have the freedom to make our own choices, but at the same time, it's scary. I'm bombarded from all sides by moralistic advice and judgments. Edwin is on a mission to find out just what is in the minds of Americans and institutions and organizations and religious organizations, corporations, uh, especially, I think, our education system with our young folks. Edwin has been very concerned about the young people that are coming up in this world today and what kind of uh, mentality they have, what kind of training, what kind of teaching, what, what are they learning and who are they learning it from and how is this, uh, if you could say, this pattern of not having empathy and compassion being transferred to our kids. So I think it's a bit ironic that I'm, I'm standing up here, expected to teach all of you, yet I know very little. However, it's useful for me to teach you that you know very little as well. <laughs> From every conceivable brand. At some point, you have to really desire something enough that you're willing to do everything to make that happen. So, raise your hand in this room if you find wisdom to be very valuable in life. Good. I'm glad to see that, because otherwise this would mean nothing to you. <laughs> uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a kind of a conservative family uh, in Sacramento. It was an evangelical family. And, you know, I thought I kind of had the answers to all the world's uh, problems and knew how things worked. But then, uh, instead of going to college, I took off and spent 10 years uh, traveling around the world. And I was really kind of like a seeker, I'd say, you know, just kind of searching kind of for the meaning of life, what life is all about. <clears throat> yes. And as I kind of went to all these different cultures, uh, Indonesia, India, China, Russia, you know, you name it, I really wow. started seeing the common humanity of everyone. And that is like the, the spark that gets the whole creative process moving. School is not all that it can be. Right now, it's a place for most people to determine that their goal out is to get out as soon as possible. God give us right. Buddha was right. Jesus was right. Many monks were right. But I just want to feel good. Feeling good is being good. Yeah, I'm getting excited about new sights. You know, it's uh -huh. like really, you know, there's just uh, warm, generous, kind people you know, all over the world. And mm -hmm. I really came to see that that, that, that that's kind of part of our basic nature. Follow your excitement. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. And I've been kind of doing projects around uh, looking at values. I became very interested in kind of looking thematically at, at values. And so my search kind of led me to the, the centrality of the, 
value of empathy, just seeing that it, it's core to who we are as human beings. What you put out is what you get back. Oh, here comes another train. Oh gosh, Leia gets sad. No way. She's human. Holy shit. I didn't know that. I thought she was a robot who's always happy. And that we just need more of it in society. Which fork in the road are you going to take? Are you going to go that away, which is the easy path that most people take away from the topic, away from the question? Or are you going to take the more difficult path that way? That leads to awareness, which then leads to knowledge, planning, and preparation. That's the issue you have to decide first. And he has explored the potentials of the mind rather than just this single potential before us gathered here today. You may be sitting there thinking that what I'm saying is preposterous, but accepting that reality is dramatically affected by systems and phenomena that lie beyond your capability to understand and control is the first step toward developing wisdom. I seriously get these emails, guys. It's crazy. People think I'm like happy all the time. I mean, we're just, we're so... Uh, human down here. We are all fucking human beings. We all want to do good things. We have different teachings, uh, teaching uh, books and stuff, but we are all fucking human beings. The advice is inconsistent, confusing, bewildering. But we have evolved, evolved, uh, evolution has been going forward. We are here, and what the fuck? Listen up, folks. Your emotions are your guidance system. Period. End of story. If we are evolving, we need to go forward. We can do fucking better. And all of the answers that we've been given are so bizarre, so emotionally charged, so childish, and lacking in any substance that most thinking people on the earth today have dismissed them as unworthy. Like Jesus said, you can, de you can do better things than I. So I've always been taught that your emotions are telling you the truth. And yet, what have we been programmed and taught and learned? That uh, your, your emotions are to be feared if you have too many of them, you need to numb them down. Let's take a drug. Uh, if you, you know, let's flatline everybody. If you suffer from depression, instead of getting the emotions rolling, let's suppress them. Uh, so then you get into a flatline state. And, you know, the media, everything, everywhere you look, um, pharmaceuticals, the media, um, the news, even a lot of stuff on the internet, all aimed at um, being fearful of your emotions, how misleading they are, how you get stuck in them, how you can, um, all kinds of stuff like this, be afraid to feel them. They are saying, here's the trophy that you will never get. You will always be smaller. You will always be fighting. You can go there. That is fucking bullshit. I think because we are so human beings. You know what? It's 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 fucking awesome, people. Seriously, because I am at a point where I am just so me. Like I am so okay with me. The first most important thing is um, don't be afraid to be yourself. People wonder why the hell they fail at everything. It's like, well, you're trying to do everything everybody else's way, and because we live in the totalitarian fascist fourth fucking Reich. Um, basically, nobody else's way is going to work because, you know, school is just like, obey, don't ask questions, and don't eat Pop-Tarts or we're throwing you in jail. So, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just like we're so locked down. These are all nice targeting words for people to dive into. Why? Because we don't want to accept the understanding of taking responsibility for ourselves for our actions. You know, a lot of people say that no, oh, well, people are just lazy and they don't want to take responsibility. Well, it's not so much that they don't want to take responsibility. It's that we're trained by society to be, to be 
terrified of everything. It just totally paralyzes you. And I'm just like so touched that, you know, my own process of coming out of my shell more and reaching out more to people on the social media sphere is actually inspiring people to do the same. We can feel what the fuck ever. We can do what the fuck ever at this team that we are in. So, go do sports. Go do stuff that you fucking love. Do stuff that you fucking love. However, in retrospect, I cannot say that I'm any more intelligent than my peers. I can attest that I'm only the best at doing what I'm told. I, um, yet here I stand, and I'm supposed to be proud that I've completed this period of indoctrination. I will leave in the fall, and I will go on to the next phase expected of me in order to receive a paper document that certifies that I'm capable of work. But I can test that I'm a human being not just a worker. I'm a thinker, an adventurer. A worker is someone who is trapped within repetition, a slave of the system set up before him. But now I have successfully shown that I was the best slave. I did what I was told to the extreme. While others sat in class and doodled to later become great artists, I sat in class to take notes to become a great test taker. While others would come to class without their homework done because they were reading about an interest of theirs, I never missed an assignment. While others were creating music and writing lyrics, I decided to do extra credit, even, I, even though I didn't even need it. So I wonder, why did I even want this position? Sure, I earned it, but what will come of it? When I leave educational institutionalism, will I be successful or forever lost? I have no clue about what I want to do with my life, I have no interest because I saw every subject as a study, as work, and I excelled at every subject just for the purpose of excelling and not learning. And quite frankly, I'm very scared. I'm, I'm done with trying to fit everyone else's standards and acceptance, and even when everyone else is so resistant to just being in the flow of life in general and so resistant to different views and perspectives. Um, it's not even funny. It's not even, maybe it is funny. So there must be a group to which we can point a finger at and saying, look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing to the population. Economists around the world are struggling to break free of the clutches of the financial crisis, but a 12-year-old Canadian knows what needs to be done. Victoria Grant took the internet by storm overnight after a video of her slamming Canada's banks for robbing the people went viral. What I have discovered is the banks and the government have colluded to financially enslave the people of Canada. See, it's all perspective. It's all evolutionary, revolving, revolutionary spirals of evolution. You can't let that get to you. I do that often, and um, once I let it all go and just realize, you know, live your truth, do what you gotta do. Um, if we don't do it, it don't fucking happen. If we don't face our shadow side, it don't fucking happen. You won't save the planet. You'll be like the cat lady with 75 cats. I try to save everyone. And it creates this horrible stench, dysfunctional place. That's what we're doing. Between these cinder block walls, we are all expected to be the same. We are trained to ace every standardized test. And those who deviate and see light through a different lens are worthless to the scheme of public education and therefore viewed with contempt. As I have always said to everybody, I am not doing this uh, for money. I'm not doing this for fame. I am doing this because I love everybody out there. The aim is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level to breed and train a standardized citizenry, to put down dissent and originality. That is the aim in the United States. Instead of the revolution, the Russian Revolution, Trotsky, etc., Lenin and them, or the, the early uh, Trotskyites, they couldn't stay and run the government. They got taken over, co-opted and corrupted by later Stalin, etc. 
So a, a revolution in the sense of let's fight them never works because you get the pendulum swing. I'm against this, therefore you become what you're against. This, that, this, that, vaccinations, war, etc, etc, etc. I'm actually at a point where I, I don't even care what people, you know, what I want to call me. <laughs> uh, people who want to say, oh, Olea, oh, you're no longer spiritual because he's, I, I heard you say the word fuck in one of your videos, oh my god. Or Leia after it's so funny what, what people how they just want to project and, and label me and put me in a little box and you know what I really I, I actually I'm at a point where like that stuff doesn't it doesn't really bug me anymore and that that says a lot. To illustrate this idea, doesn't it perturb you to learn about the idea of critical thinking? Is there really such a thing as uncritically thinking? To think is to process information in order to form an opinion. But if we are not critical when processing this information, are we really thinking? Or are we mindlessly accepting other opinions as truth? This was happening to me, and if it wasn't for the rare occurrence of an avant-garde 10th grade English teacher, Donna Bryan, I would have been doomed. I am now enlightened, but my mind still feels disabled. I must retrain myself and constantly remember how insane this ostensibly sane place really is. But right now, it just kind of occurred to me, I can get through it, right? It seems impossible, but that's because we haven't gone through it. That's because we haven't experienced it yet. That's what I'm doing here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, is to inspire all of you who have stuff to say, but aren't letting yourself say it, just like I did, because of fear. You just gotta kind of burst out and not be afraid to be yourself, and that's really the biggest key. Because until you reach that, anything you try to do is gonna be screwed. Our experiences will guide us, and we just have to keep it going step by step. We can't fear life because we will always wonder what if. What if? I'd rather do something wrong and learn from my mistake than wonder. What if I took that chance? What if I did this? So, I'm going to live my dream to my fullest extent and be the happiest person I can be. Because of, you know, what will people think of me? What, oh, all of these things. Like, I have so much to share with the world. It is so easy to point fingers at people. It is so easy to just say, well, there's the NWO. There's the Illuminati. Look what they've done to the planet. Look at what they've done to the population. Look at this, look at when that. When a bank gives you a mortgage, which literally means a death pledge or a loan, they don't actually give you money. They click a key on a computer and generate the fake money out of thin air. That has become painfully obvious, even for me, a 12-year-old Canadian, that we are being defrauded and robbed by the banking system and a composite government. What will we do to stop this crime? Cheers, even a standing ovation for airing his grievances to the YouTube world. And surprisingly, the school district supports him. One minute and 27 seconds was all it took for Jeff Bliss to get his point across. You got it. You got to take this job serious. This is the future of this nation. Hi, everyone. So my name is Erica Goldson. And I guess I should start off by introducing myself. Why am I so important that I should be standing on this big red circle right now? I guess the reason why I'm here is actually because I have a lot of trouble answering that. I don't, I'm not able to define myself in that way. Discernment and clarity, a discussion about discernment and clarity. His tirade went well beyond the hallways of Duncanville High, going viral through social media to news outlets across the country. All of these people who are such beautiful people. And um, we have, of course, our local Smurf, uh, Jay, here. Um, we have uh, me, I'm Tom Warrior, a.k.a. Dave Kelso, as I click on this thing. There's a little bit of delay time, so I don't know if voice and video is synchronized. What do I know? Um, my first time hosting a hangout, actually. Hi, Christina Munoz here for Kateri, the fabulous 20-year-old here in our prosperity team. 20 years old, came to Denver, came to the mastermind, and I keep telling her she's going to save a country by the time she's my age, and she will. Okay. 
And um, we also have Mike Gardner. I'm doing my best to click the controls on the video screens. Bear with me. First time I'm sailing this particular Google Hangout ship. Katarina Edwards. And I'm clicking over into her video thingy. Um, and they have so much to share and they've let fear terrorize them. But they're putting their foot down and saying no more. No more, no more, no more. <laughs> you two aren't any different. And I had you like up here and now you're not. And now here I am in a world guided by fear. A world suppressing the uniqueness that lies inside each of us. A world where we can either acquiesce to the inhuman nonsense of corporatism and materialism or insist on change. We are not enlivened by an educational in system that clandestinely sets us up for jobs that could be automated, for work that need not be done, for enslavement, enslavement without fervency for meaningful achievement. Then clicking back to the um, the, the, the Smurf again. Um, Jay Larson there, and then we got um, Brian, and um, he's running the nonprofit organization called Safety Net Industries, and then of course we have Ashley, and um, Ashley, Brian, and Katarina are all a part of the Empower Network. Now we're actually here, I'm going to turn this around because you have to see this sunset. We're at a baseball game. Her first baseball game. Mine, yes, I've never been treated so well. We're here and we're in the suites. It's so cool. You see, I'm a writer and a speaker and an activist. I'm a student, but at the same time I'm a teacher. I'm a mediator. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a thinker. I'm an artist and a musician and a dancer. Love to dance. We have no choices in life when money is our motivational force. Our motivational force ought to be passion. But this is lost from the moment we step into a system that trains us rather than inspires us. Um, what you need to do is, is not hold grudges. You've got to move away from that kind of mental state and begin to embrace the opposite and find out what's really going on there and seeing beyond that to the greater whole. You know, I'm also a daughter, a sister, and a friend. But I guess the most important thing that I am, the most important reason that I'm here right now is that I'm a dreamer. Because you see, I don't like to live my life with limitations of what I can and can't be. I prefer endless possibilities. I like to expand my own horizons by being open-minded to new experiences and insights. And I expect the same from everyone I interact with. And, and also realizing that the Illuminati themselves are in this dilemma. They know you're waking up. They don't know what to do about that, okay? They want to dumb you down. It's not working. <laughs> You've managed, all right? There are people awakening, and that's, that's just something, some things I'd love you guys to keep in mind and, and maybe help us all get through this shift a lot smoother and with grace. So, like, the events will change your life, and you'll actually come to realize that when you're here, so. Right on, and I just want to share uh, the power of these events and coming to a realization. But you're talking about people who have earned five-figure monthly incomes, six-figure monthly incomes, and even seven-figure monthly incomes, and they're no different than you and I. I'm not special. You realize I don't walk around on a pedestal. I wear shorts and a t-shirt and sandals, and I usually don't even wear any shoes or socks. You know what I mean? I have a message to share with the world, and it doesn't matter how many people think that, you know, want to poo-poo some aspect of me or some aspect of my message. It's just, it's silliness. Over the course of about two years now, I've gradually noticed that the educational system is failing the student body of this nation. Therefore we get the sayings, you fight, you become that which you fight. So if you start fighting one part of yourself, you will become it. It's a matter of grace under pressure. Um, one of the things that I was guided to do seven years ago was to put together a program 
that would bring not just myself but other people into the public eye to share their stories, to share their knowledge, their information, their wisdom. It was up to the people who were listening as to use their own discernment. I try to break down the barriers of belief, which is why I'm not afraid to say what's really on my mind. So, um, discernments and clarity. The main focus here, because everybody is, you know, we've been trained to see things in terms of good and evil. So it's like we judge the tools, and the tools, you know, make us their bitch. It's like, oh, those evil corporations. No, corporations are just a mechanism, a construct. And, you know, we need to take responsibility and stop expecting our politicians to be our babysitters. And we need to be willing to not only come up with the solutions, but implement them ourselves uh, before these psychopaths destroy the earth and kill us all. So on that note, who wants to open this up? I've never been taking care of us. <laughs> they know how to take care of you, the prosperity team. We work hard, but we play hard. And that's exactly what I did. On my day of graduation from a small town high school in upstate New York, I said what I really felt. And little did I know was that it would become a viral internet sensation. Um, as to what the information meant to them. Um, because it is about discernment. That's what this shift is also about. So revolutions don't work. America fought against centralized government. We fought against centralized government. And what's happening? We're becoming a socialist welfare state. I don't want to get political, but let's be honest. Some agreed with what I had to say, and some thought I was being a bit short-sighted. But regardless, I left it open for, and I appreciated the discourse that followed. And now I'll share some of it with you, and perhaps I'll spark something. To every subject just for the purpose of excelling and not learning. We have no choices in life when money is our motivational force. Our motivational force ought to be passion. But this is lost from the moment we step into a system that trains us rather than inspires us. Now I have successfully shown that I was the best slave. Doesn't it perturb you to learn about the idea of critical thinking? Is there really such a thing as uncritically thinking? To think is to process information in order to form an opinion. But if we are not critical when processing this information, are we really thinking? Or are we mindlessly accepting other opinions as truth? Okay, now, have a look. I'm going to turn it around. start so basically what I've got going on here what we've got going on here is a bunch of collection of ideas this is basically everybody's ideas all rolled into one so this isn't anybody one any one person's idea this is our idea and this is our place what we're gonna do is We've got a bunch of homeless people out on the streets right now. And they're all looking for a way out. And we've got a bunch of people sitting around with all of these college degrees and they're living with their parents, working minimum wage jobs and not ever getting anywhere they wanted to get. Loaded with debt, so it seems like they'll never climb their way out. We are more than robotic bookshelves conditioned to blurt out facts we were taught in school. We are all very special. Every human on this planet is very special. So aren't we all deserving of something better? How many people are, when you start having 50% of the people feeding off the government, you're starting to eat your own body. You're not creating new wealth, new energy. You're starting to eat your own body. You're cannibalizing yourself. So America was so against socialistic principles that it's starting to become socialist in a way. Or China was so against capitalistic principles, so China is now enamored with, excited by, wanting to be capitalist. In fact, you could argue that China is more capitalistic than Americans at this point. So it's this duality nature. If you fight the revolution, now how does this apply to the truth movement and to all the awakening movement, you know? The Bilderbergers, the New World Order, the... Do you realize that all 6.6 .6 billion people on this planet 
let that happen? Do you realize that you are all co-creator for such events to take place? We're trying to figure out what's the best thing to say next. But the one thing that they are telling me that would be very beneficial for everyone experiencing the shift, and there's not anyone here that's here today that doesn't believe that we're in a shift of change of time, um, is to be fluid. Fluidity is the key because nothing, and I've been saying this for many years now, nothing is business as usual anymore. I think there are many of you out there that have experienced that. It's also part of the shift. It's up to you to use discernment. Very, very important for the shift. Not a fear thing here. It's an educational thing. So I recommend that highly. Do you realize that everything that we know of conspiracy, that everything we know of war, corruption, suffering, we've let it happen. We've pretty much given permission for ourselves to let all this take place. And if we don't approach it and embrace this, we're going to be faced with the same problems that we're facing today. Have you been holding up your end of it? I'm going to do my best. I'm human. I have my imperfections. Uh -huh. But yes, I will try to stay true to what I am speaking. You know, Cal's Trilateral Commission, the Fed, all this stuff. So there's millions of us now starting to wake up against the old system. Because there are so many other people that I can touch in my life and their lives and there's so many people that I can reach with my willingness to just be myself. But then again, we're not typical people because we're willing to do whatever it takes to free humanity. We're willing to do whatever it takes to create change in this world and that's why you're here to help other people that can use your help. So it just shows your passion and your heart and I just want to say I appreciate you being here, Ashley. And it does mean a lot and I know you have a very, very bright future. You know, who am I cheating out of their future courage and strength by me not putting forth what I have to offer. I also recommend for, we was talking about being fluid, it's also about finding your authentic self. All of you out here and all of us up here are listening to each other and to listening to you and you're listening to us and you're all trying to figure out who you are. You're, we, we all are. We're all still doing that. There isn't any of us here that aren't still trying to figure out what we're actually doing. We just know we're doing it. You guys are doing it by sitting here. Being in your authentic self is one of the most powerful tools that you can use. Whether we, we're talking in politics, we're talking in spiritual work, it doesn't really matter. Authentic self. So somebody could come up to you and say, you know what, gee, that stuff that you talk about over there, that UFO stuff, that's just crazy. And you know, a lot of times people will go, and they be quiet. Don't be quiet anymore. Say, well, you know, it works for me. You don't have to get negative. You don't have to get defensive. You can just say it works for me. Much like what Carrie was talking about. We just have to find our authentic self. Be part of the shift. Be part of the shift by being fluid. Because what works today, folks, may not work even later today. That's how quickly it will change. And the less you are rooted into some kind of reality that it has to go A, B, C, D, the easier it is for you. Thank you. You know, fear, fear is a potent thing because fear can usurp us and take us down in an instant if we're not being careful to be vigilant and aware. You know, the greatest remedy for fear is courage. You know, in the Hopi tradition, they don't even have a word for fear. It's called courage rising because they understand that fear has to be remedied by courage. The courage to just willfully go act and do it anyway. And what I'm seeing here is so beautiful. I mean, it's this blossoming. Now, the thing here is going to be so that you do not keep the pendulum polarity swinging. Revolution against something never works. Evolution, revo revolutions in the sense of revolving, spiraling through space-time, the revolving, evolving, works because it is what's naturally happening with the galaxy, with the sun, with our tourists, with the stars, with the Andromeda galaxy, with the Milky Way. With all, all hatred with is self-hatred. All hatred is self-hatred. 
We, in the truth movement, in the awakening movement, or the truth movement against nine, you know, nine eleven, the Bilderbergers, etc., the Fed, the have haves and the have nots, the people just want health care and food and etc. These protest movements, we're going to have to be very careful. Circumstances do not determine state of being. State of being determines circumstances. Now you can use that, however we would also suggest something even simpler and something even stronger. And that is simply, and the mantra is this, circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. With, well if we're not, we'll just have more revolution. Evolution, the evolving revolution. Revolving means evolution, the spiraling, like I just talked about. And again, listen to the way that this synchronistically translates in your English language. Circumstances don't matter. They do not create materialization. Only state of being matters. Only state of being materializes experience. But inside the truth movement, there's a hatred. Our own self-hatred will be manifested. Recently, I just watched a video on a woman uh, named Amanda on TED, the eight-foot-tall woman, where she talks about the music industry and what she's doing. And people would hate on her for her being honest and connecting with people because it involved what? Money. Money. There's such hatred against the money system Yet there is a flip side, schizophrenic flip side, that wants it. See this, within the truth movement, we're going to have to, really the healing needs to happen inside ourselves first. All hatred is self-hatred. This is why every teacher from Jesus, Jeshua, Ben Joseph, Ben David, the Christ, Krishna, Rama, Buddha, everyone who's ever taught St. Francis, all of them, they have never advocated physical revolutions, but internal revolutions. So. The mantra is, anytime you find yourself doubting, stuck, fearful, because of what you believe the situation is, what you believe the circumstances are, you can, if you wish, use this little reminder. <clears throat> circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. And then choose the state of being you prefer. And then redefine the circumstances from that state of being so that you can erase the echo and allow the true reflection to then take form from your state of being. Internal evolutions, internal awakenings, individual revolutions, personal Armageddons, meaning facing yourself. Abusing our minds for innovation rather than memorization, for creativity rather than futile activity, for rumination rather than stagnation. We are not here to get a degree to then get a job so we can consume industry approved application after application. There is more and more still. So as you can see, I didn't feel too good about myself on my day of graduation. I was first in my class. Someone who had never gotten a B on a report card. And yet all that information that I had stuffed into inside my head didn't make me feel prepared for the world outside of school. Our government right now has spent itself to the point where they can't really maintain what they're doing. And, um... Did you see that? <laughs> Beautiful sunset over the mountains. Beautiful. And the basin. Right? Look at, look at what just happened. It just went from nothing, three minutes, nine minutes, zero minutes, ten minutes, two minutes, to whoosh, 17 <laughs> hours and two minutes. <laughs> just from just being crazy on the camera? Just from being crazy on the camera. People just wanted to watch this. My next. You know what's really funny is my friend Dave Kelso. I know he's watching the hangout right now because he's talking to me on Facebook, mm -hmm. but that's exactly what he's sharing with me is that like he, that's why he's so irreverent. Like he has a YouTube channel called Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. I mean, if you haven't seen it, go check it out because it's pretty funny. But <laughs> <laughs> like um, his his channel is just so irreverent and he is swearing and he, I mean, he's, he's even like, 
the funny thing is he's just not afraid to be so crazy and irreverent even in a circle of people who are super spiritual i mean so he faces a whole bunch of flack and shit from people but there's a reason he has like a million views you know it's because he has this crazy irreverent humor and just he's like psycho on camera but I mean, he's he's so entertaining to watch and listen to and that's why and that's kind of clicking for me right now like that's why people actually want to view things <laughs> it's because it's so ridiculous right it is it is we got to do the crazy i mean unless of course i sought to be in the same type of setting merely sitting in a desk doing what i was told in order to be validated john dewey who was an american reformer of education in the early 20th century had once said that education is not preparation for life education is life itself so why must we fool ourselves into believing that learning stops after you exit a classroom I would say that's quite the limited perspective and very destructive to the advancement of mankind. <laughs> <laughs>